Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, December 6, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. I mentioned, I think it was late last week, maybe Friday, about the latest version of Videoland's VLC fixing some critical vulnerabilities. Uh, Didier looked into this closer and was surprised that uh, he didn't uh, sort of see the update available uh, pop up from within the application. He checked it manually and, well, it turned out that uh, the uh, feed that they're using, basically a simple web service, uh, did still advertise uh, the older version. Earlier today, uh, Videolan uh, did actually uh, fix this problem. So you should see that update now being advertised straight from within the application. And then bad news for everybody running a server with a baseboard management controller from AMI, which, well, uh, sadly, is probably pretty much sort of everybody. Eclipsium has a blog post with details regarding uh, three different vulnerabilities that they identified. The most critical one has a CVSS score of 9.9, .9, and it is a, well, a fairly straightforward sort of command injection vulnerability in the Redfish API. Redfish is sort of the more modern IPMI replacement more built around web standards and with that of course inherits some of the standard web application vulnerabilities that I'm actually uh, teaching about here in San Francisco uh, this week. Only constraint here is that uh, the bash code that you are injecting as part of the URL has to be, well, first of all, valid bash code, but also a valid uh, URL component because nothing here can be sort of URL encoded. Well, uh, they have a little uh, sample, I guess, proof of concept exploit here that basically just downloads a URL via curl and then pipes it to a bash. The exact URL that's vulnerable here has been withheld so far. The second vulnerability, CFSS score of 8.3, is, well, one of your good old default credentials for root for SSH. And least important is the third vulnerability, which is a simple user enumeration via the API. So the big concern here is the first vulnerability, arbitrary code execution, which could essentially allow an attacker to completely take over your server if they have access to the Redfish API, which, well, uh, you definitely should not expose to the internet, of course. Well, and uh, talking about stuff that should not be exposed to the internet, it has been a pretty a common default configuration for a few years now for home-based routers to not enable the management interface on the WAN, the internet side, uh, by a default. Turns out, well, uh, that uh, Netgear in a recent release for its Nighthawk Wi-Fi 6 routers here had uh, messed up a little bit. They have the SH and Telnet server listening on all interfaces, but they block access on the WAN interface with IP tables rule, which is good, makes sense. The only problem is they forgot to also apply those rules for IPv6. They have released an update a while ago that fixes this particular issue. So as usual, not just making sure that you're not exposing your admin interfaces, but also keep those routers up to date. Exploitation, of course, can be a little bit tricky here, given how difficult it can be find to scan and find a particular IPv6 address. But remember, uh, this IPv6 address may be in use as you are connecting to a particular website, which then in turn may allow access uh, to your router. However, that web access would have to come from the router itself, not from a browser or a system system a client connected to the router. And Veritas uh, fixed uh, five different vulnerabilities for its net backup uh, solution last uh, week. The 
most severe issue has a CVSS score of 9.8 and it's an unauthenticated remote command execution vulnerability. Not a lot of details here uh, on the uh, Veritas uh, support website, not even a CVE number yet for these vulnerabilities. There's also an authenticated remote code execution vulnerability. Of course, the standard default credentials, which I guess all of these devices sort of uh, need to have. And then we also have a restricted shell that allows escape to a regular shell. And finally, the least severe still with an 8.8 CVSS uh, score uh, shell privilege escalation of vulnerability. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.